start again. So let's start. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So for today, we're gonna see a specific type of loop within Excel VBA, right? Which is called the for next loop. There are four types of loops in Excel, which is for next for each do until and do while, but we're going to focus on for next for today and keep the rest of them for a future video. Now I'm going to give you certain examples and I'm going to explain it in a simple manner so that you are well equipped to use loops whenever some kind of complex situation comes your way, which requires you to write the code and is not possible through a formula or a power query technique, right? Let us jump into the scenario here. What we want to do today is we just want to enter one to 10 numbers in this blank range, which is A1 to A10. Okay. So all I have to do is enter one, two, three, like this till A10. Okay. And I'm taking a simple example here. And this can be done manually very easily or can be achieved through simply dragging the values downwards. Right. But the intent here is not to find out alternate ways of doing this activity. The intent here is just to make you understand loops and how it works in the most simplest of ways. Okay. Because once you understand this, you will be able to implement the same logic or same technique anywhere, wherever you require a loop in a complex situation. I'm going to go to my VB editor. Uh, as you know, to go to the VB editor, you can just press uh, Alt F11 in your keyboard and you will have VB editor opened. Now, once VB editor is open, uh, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a module because this is where I'm going to write my code. Once the editor, the module is open, I'm going to enter a new sub procedure because this is where we're going to write our macro and you can name it anything you like. Uh, I'm going to write it loop range. Okay. Once you have created your sub procedure, um, you can just write in first thing that I'm going to write is I'm going to declare a my variable. Okay. I'm going to say dim I as integer. Okay. And I'm going to explain why I'm declaring this variable. I want Excel VBA to loop through values from one to 10. Okay. And I'm going to use this I variable in my for loop for next loop to do the same. Okay. So second line that I'm going to write is for I which is the variable that I just declared is equal to one to 10 and then enter. And I'm going to close this for next with, you can either close it by next or you can just write next I either way it will work. Now what this is saying is I want values from one to 10 to loop through my variable I. Okay. So one at a time. So when I run this loop once, it will have the value of one. And when it re returns back for the second round, it will have the value of two and so on and so forth. Within my for loop, within that code bracket, what I'll do is I'm going to write sheet one because that's where I want my values to be entered dot range, open the bracket. Now, if you remember the range was a one to a 10, so that's why range a, but I'm going to close my double quotes here, right? I'm not going to write one. That's because I want to make this dynamic. I want to make this run through code and do not hard code it. Right. So for that to happen, I'm going to say, and, and I will be using this variable that I just declared I, and then close the bracket dot value is equal to again, I, now, if I explain this line to you, it's saying, sheet one dot range a now in the first time when it runs right the value value of i would be one so that's why i've said and i so this entire line means sheet one dot range a one dot value is equal to i because i already contains the value of one so i don't want to create another variable for it so we're going to reuse the i variable and i'm going to say i okay so this entire line says for the first iteration, it will say sheet one dot range a one dot value is equal to one. But when it r runs the first time and it comes here next I, it will revert back to the first line. 
and in the second time when it runs now the value of i would be 2 so the second time when it runs the this line would mean sheet 1 dot range a2 dot value is equal to 2 okay let's see how this will work okay i'm gonna just realign this window a little bit so that you can see what's happening and as you see the range here right i'm gonna run this code by pressing on this button you can also run the code by pressing f5 on your keyboard once i run this as you see the entire code ran pretty quickly and it gave me the values that i needed in that empty range all right so this code will run even for something for 100 rows 1000 rows 10000 rows right it might take a little bit more time to process but it will still run so it's not limited to just 10 rows you can do you can do as many as rows as you want uh, with this okay but then now the basic problem here is uh, i have to give a starting range starting row and an end row here right but what if in scenarios you do not know the end range so let me give you a scenario for this let's say you have this range filled up now from a1 to a10 okay however in b column you want to enter a value which is a multiple of values which is there in a column you want to multiply the number by five so here you would have five you would have ten similarly in this scenario you know the first range which is there which is uh, a1 but then the last range would be frequently changing it can be at a10 or it can be at a20 or 100 something like that right so when that happens your existing code will not work because here you have hard coded it as 1 to 10 it will only work from this range till this range right for that so for that purpose what we'll do is we'll make this 10 dynamic okay and instead of hard coding is at 10 i want excel to find out what was the last row entered uh, so that it can accommodate accordingly so i'm going to write another sub procedure and i'm going to say group range dynamic okay give it a different name declare the same variable as integer i'm storing it as integer because the value that i'm going to store in variable i is, will always be a number okay for i is equal to one two now here i'm not going to write 10 instead i'm going to make it dynamic so here we can do that sheet one dot range a and because a is the column where we have some values and this is the column where we can identify identify what was the last row which was filled up okay so i'm going to say sheet one dot range a and rows dot count and let me finish the line and then i'll explain what does this, this mean okay dot end excel up dot row and i'm going to close this with next now what this line is saying is sheet one dot range a and rows dot count this code gives me rows dot count gives me the total number of rows i have in an excel sheet now in normal scenarios if you are using the latest one version of excel you will have 1,048,576 rows okay so what this line is saying is sheet one dot range a 1,048,576 right but then the line does not end here dot end excel up dot row so what this line is doing is it's similar to me doing on a keyboard and pressing control and up arrow okay so if i press control and up, and up arrow from here it will take me to the last entry which was filled up in my range okay in my column rather so end excel up is doing that and then dot row is giving me the row which it has stopped so in this case it stopped on row uh, a10 uh, in fact row 10 uh, but if i had some values let's say here it were it would have stopped at a20 so now the last row in my entire column is dynamic okay using this small piece of code now what i can do is 
I can write sheet one dot range. Instead of A, this time we are working with B column, B, and again I is fine. Dot value is equal to sheet one dot range A because now we are referring to A column and multiplying that value with five. Uh, we are writing sheet one dot range A and I dot value multiplied by five. That's it. Okay. Let's quickly run the code and see what happens. And if I, let's say I wanted to extend this till row number 20. Let's see then what happens. As you see, this is now dynamic. So no matter how many rows I have, it will automatically accommodate that row into the code and give you the results accordingly. So that is it for for next loop. I hope this was helpful. Please do comment below and let me know if you want me to cover more examples of for next loop so that it becomes even more clear to you. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.